Alors, and thanks for joining us on Universal Heritage Television Media. My name is Afam H, your host. We welcome you again to another edition of our program, Daybreak Nigeria. In this package, we are going to talk about the seemingly unending crisis in Imo and New Jersey. And I have two senior journalists in the state to talk about the issues. They are Comrade Ojuku Lambert. Comrade Ojuku Lambert is the publisher and chief executive of Newspoint newspaper, one of the leading tabloids in the state. Comrade, you are welcome to our program. Thank you, my pleasure. Next to him is uh, Martin Story, another senior journalist in the state and publisher of the New Oriental newspaper. Martin, you are welcome to our program. Thank you very much, Afam. Yeah. Please remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube platform. Comrade Ojuku, yeah. let me start with you. <coughs> Now, for some time now, since 2018, Imo and New Day has been engulfed in some kind of crisis that appear intractable. Can you give us a little background to this uh, situation up to the moment? Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> the Imo and New Day, the New Day Imo State Council challenge has just been because of, uh, because of the election we had in 2018. And... Um, the election was scheduled to hold in 2018. And every effort made to go by the constitutional provision of the, of the union was thwarted by the then um, Innocent Igwe led um, um, administration. Innocent Igwe um, is of the IBC chapel. Because any UJ runs is a uh, elections to the delegates and the delegates must come from the chapels so now these chapels are the people who made the delegates and the constitution provided that you must like every other election paste the name of the delegates before the election so that everybody will know who is voting who and you have to vote chapel by chapel they didn't do that so we understand there was some inference or interference by government then government of Rochas and Corruption. So they came into the system trying to, as usual, to force people who are not um, qualified to run the election. And the journalists, has to, the journalists have to stop it. So in the process of doing that, the matter was stalled. So I was running and some other persons were also running. So we have to go to court. But before then, some people emerged unopposed, according to, there are nine positions. Out of that nine position, two, well, two people have already marched unopposed because no other person was contesting with them. So we had to go to court. But when I went to court, the matter was told. That is the, 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 the challenge we had that time. But ever since then, the matter has been in the court. When the matter was going on in court, this government came in, the current government, and they want to attack the judge some hoodlums who are called youth or whatever. They went to the house of the judge, attacked, attacked the judge, the former judge who was supposed to be in the, you know, in the court who was trying the matter. And that's uh, are you referring to the industrial court? Yes, industrial, industrial court, industrial because industrial that is industrial where, you, yes, that is where you take union matters okay. all over Nigeria. Okay. Um, it's not in the normal regular court, the industrial court, you know, in the world. So the judge became apprehensive and abandoned the matter. The matter has gone so far up to up to um, judgment level. It was all, almost being rounded up in 2002. So, so people embarrassed the judge and he has to leave the thing. So that is where the matter is. But beyond in that... 2002 or 2022? Sorry, 2022. So from 2018 to 2002, we've been in court. So the trajectory of the unfortunate development is that journalists in most states, the pros and cons of the problem is that we don't want legitimate election. We want election where every topical journalist must take part. And that was stalled in 2018. So that has been the problem. So in a brief, in a, in a nutshell, that is why, why we have the problem. But in going, in, in incoming governments now started forcing people, dividing and ruling members of the union. You know the way government... Okay, I'll come back to you. Um, uh, Martins, on the 15th of March, uh, one uh, one guma who... Um, and I claim the New Jersey chairman, you know, reportedly attacked the secretary at the Portacal Road, you know, cutting away some of the properties within. 
and uh, it, it, it became a subject of a police uh, action. You know. Now, um, can you give us a background to what actually happened? Yeah, uh, I want to say, just as um, leader Ujuku and the publisher uh, just stated, that there has been a crisis since 2018 in the Imo Council of the NEUJ. It is not unusual in every association, whether MBA, Nigerian, uh, whether the, the engineers, uh, you know, journalists uh, in the Korean, everywhere, you can have a crisis. At the end of the day, either you serve it within the union or you can uh, go to court to settle the case. At the end of the day, whoever that the, the judgment uh, you know, favors, the other you know, group either appeals or um, follows what the court has said. In the case of Imo, Imo uh, and UJ, no person begrudges the fact that uh, Comrade Ifani Nwanguma parades himself as a new UJ chairman. We are not totally opposed to him as being the chairman of his own uh, faction. Uh, faction. What we are angry about is a situation where he will live where his own faction is conducting his own affairs, coming to our own uh, in, in, in a section to interrupt what we are you know, doing. As you correctly stated, on that uh, Friday, the 15th of uh, this month, whatever happened, he went to a NUJ secretary, the main NUJ secretariat, bequeathed to us, even by military administrators, for years back. And uh, you know, when they are like uh, on a criminal, you know, started looting, he broke into the place, cut the water, refrigerators, amplifiers, uh, in the public address systems, laptops. so in, in the laptops, so many things. And um, we got the inf information there was a, a tip off. We rushed myself before I could. Um, uh, reached the place. They have gone to the police station. It was at the DPO's office over a, a new police station that I you know, met them. By the time I, the, by the time I went to, into the DPO's office, uh, the DPO was already um, interrogating the two factions because our our own members, Val Ndukwe, Regional Oloko, and uh, Williams Odunze, were already there. They were the people that intercepted Wanguma. So I now put the question to uh, the, the DPO and said, sir, please ask him whether he's not aware that there are uh, factions. He said no, that he was not aware. I said now, uh, and ask him what led him to go out of the main NUJ secretariat and start functioning elsewhere. Ask him that uh, question. What, now, in Ottawa, what is he coming here to do? Is it, as the chairman of the faction of his own NUJ, if he's supposed to cut uh, Union's uh, property, he could not answer these uh, in, in the questions. It was when we now told the, the, the DPO that this matter has been in court since 2018 that he now directed Wanguma to go and bring in those uh, items that he had already stocked in his, in his boss. And by the time he, he, brought, he brought in there, there was and a, a directive from the CP that the thing should be directed, I mean, should be uh, you know, brought to the police uh, in headquarters. And by the time we reached there the following Monday, Manguma was told in unmistakable terms that he must return those uh, 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 property to the uh, NUJ and then replace all the keys he broke. And that is where we are now. Okay. Uh, uh, OJ, I have to ask you again. You know, you said the ma this matter has been in court, mm. and um, reportedly so. Um, how did one man then become a new J chairman that gave him the authority to go to the other place? And um, a report indicate that serially he has been attacking the sectorate right for, if I can remember, up to three times. And in one case, uh, the, the, the police are aware of uh, some of these actions. Yeah. So what, what actually is his motivation? Where is he drawing the power to continually attack the sectorate? We were, we were informed, you know, unconfirmed sources that from unconfirmed sources that um, he's gyrating from a position of uh, somebody who is backed by uh, government or politicians. But we also find out that he's, uh, he's like an interloper and um, usurper. All those things are bogus claims from what we have gathered 
based on what um, my colleague here has said, you find out that the guy, what he did was illegal. The police told him that. So he has always done that, and uh, it is um, name dropping. Mr. Governor said this. Governor, the governor doesn't know him. He doesn't know the governor. Because um, talking about leadership being a chairman, he is not our chairman. Nobody voted for him. There were no, no uh, legitimate elections that, um, that uh, put him up as, um, or produced him as the chairman of any UJA. All he was, uh, he's been trying to do is to use up the position, you know, from the, part, the man who uh, in court with Chris Akadonia, because he's not the one who is in court with any UJA. The other faction, it is Chris Akadonia. When Chris Akadonia tenor, you know, expired to elapse like two, two years ago, he just is of the position and uh, claimed that he's uh, the chairman. Nobody voted him. There were no proper legitimate election held in Imo. And that is where the greater percentage of journalists, practicing journalists, are not with him. He doesn't have somebody who claims to be a chairman of any UJ. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have an ESCO. He should have, a, because when police invited him, he came alone. You are supposed to have secretaries, you are supposed to have your own the nine um, members of your high school with you. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Let me stay and stay with So you. for me, he's a usurper. Now, not the, the, you, you have two cases in court, I understand. Yes. One at the state high court yes. and one at the national industrial court. Yes. What, so what are the status of the two? The one, the, the one in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the high court yeah. is, um, is the, the one related to the, the complex, the New Year complex, okay. where he attacked some few weeks ago. You know, the sold that place to a, a surrogate of a governor in the state. That is what our information we have. And the doc, there are documents, you know. So a company, you know, purportedly bought the a, a premises for 90 million. And uh, we were there. We didn't know. Judgment were give, was given up to 22nd of, uh, up to um, 2022. So when in 2023 January, we were having our own our congress meeting what we call it in the new uh, congress and then we saw some people who came and pasted documents on the on the on the on the on the doors and bodies of the gates of the union then we all went out and saw it then we have to consult a lawyer it was um, the next day we were told by their document that the, the place has been sold and that we are supposed to vacate that's what the judgment they got said so we have to rally around to vacate the judgment and what did we do? We got a lawyer. The next day, we occupied the place until about 3 p.m. when our lawyer came down and they made sure we, are, we were safe. And we got a counter, you know, to that. And we have to paste it side by side with that one. And that's called the taking over of the place. But we have come to, so the matter is, is coming up. Even in the next 48 hours, so we go to court. The matter is built for tomorrow, 28th of uh, March, you know. So the matter has been on. So that one is illegal sell of a new UJ property in collusion with the national body led by Chris uh, Isiguzo. And Chris Isiguzo, his tenure will expire this year. Chris Isiguzo has no right, legitimately, by a new UJ constitution to sell our property. He is not a member of a new UJ Imo State Council. By our constitution, no president, no national president has the legitimate authority to sell or dispose any property. It is us who will start or will take every decision it is us who will tell him we want to if for instance the the property we are talking about along Port Harcourt Road is where international institute of journalism you know is is a um, is is husbanded and that is place that is housing um uh, the the school and one of the reputable schools 80 percent of journalists practice in Imo said went to the school myself i'm a product of IIJ. So we were very surprised when they want to try to destroy the foundation of the school. And as we talk now, because of what they have done, the school, you know, the, the, the coordinator of the school and everything has to check out. If they ask him to leave, they give him a letter, ask him to leave. Coming from somebody like from Imo State, from somebody from the Southeast, who is the national president of a, of a, of a union that ought to protect such a very good, good school. The school has run there for over 15 years. And he came now under his own, uh, you know, tenure. He came to destroy the school. You know, so that is the cross of the matter. So we are talking about criminality. What they did is criminal. They have, they don't have the constitutional powers to sell our property, and we are going after them in the court. In fact, what we want to do is the moment we rescue our property, re re recover our property, we prosecute them because none of them has the right. 
Okay. To project to, to sell off our property. Okay. Now, now uh, Matthew, they say a case not that is divided among itself cannot stand. How has this uh, crisis affected the managing practice in the state? Definitely, I'm sure everything will never be the same. Well, if you if you're talking. Uh, Journalism in terms of a reportage, uh, every journalist has a, a medium where you report activities of news on daily basis. It has not uh, affected that uh, anyway. at all. What it has affected is the unionism, the, se the social aspect of the of the union coming together, taking a collective uh, you know decision and take a stand on some certain issues mm -hmm. in the state. Uh, you know, uh, it is being said by those who package the democracy and government that uh, the fourth estate of the realm is the press, is the, the journalist. It is not engineers, it is not lawyers, it is not doctors. It is the journalists who are the fourth estate of the realm, who are supposed to uh, be the watchdog of the government and keep the government on its toes. But because of this uh, crisis and the uh, you know, division, the government now seems to be doing businesses. By businesses, I, I mean I calling uh, press conferences, uh, you know, when there are functions in the government house and all that, they do it with those that are supporting them, the other side, uh, the faction. And it has made us not to, uh, you know, take uh, concrete de decisions as uh, it's supposed yeah, to be. Uh, yes, and that's the area it has uh, affected us. There is a, what is called the press week. You know, uh, for some time now, if you look at it, it has been in the shambles. It has not been a press week as it is ought, as it ought to, to be. You know, strong, you, br you bring in professionals, you know, bring in people in the society who can talk and say, no, the government is doing this wrongly. This is not how to go about it. The government, did this, the, uh, uh, you are building at, uh, in front of uh, Asasanta. For now, we don't think that it is a top priority in the state. We have insecurity, mm -hmm. hunger, starvation, uh, joblessness, uh, in a lack of housing, no, no adequate, uh, uh, and all of that. So, if we were united, we would have taken such stance, and every paper in Imo State, every radio station and TV would have been thrown petting it. But now, if you do it, the, the faction will go and uh, say, no, this is uh, not it. We stand with the government, or we stand by the government. You know, so that is the problem we are having. Yes. They, uh, exactly. We are not setting an agenda for the government. And even the war, even the agenda or agendum, the government has already said, we don't, we don't look at it uh, you know, holistically and say, you, you have done well or you have done wrongly. And that is the problem. Uh, let me come in there to add to what you have said. It is important to say that uh, politics starts and ends with media. Imo State is one of the foremost uh, states in the southeast. In fact, we, uh, it is called the heartland. Now, but unfortunately, from what you can see, uh, Comrade Ori speak, it, it, it have the effect of the media not being together, or the uh, new media not, uh, you know, um, being together the way we ought to be, and act or play the watchdog role, the effect against the state is because the state is then going down the drains when you mean social politically. Because we are supposed to, like you said, set agenda for the state. The governor was a senator, and he has never been governor before. Now that he's a governor, we are supposed to have told him this is what is happening. We are supposed to interact with government. We are supposed to have, you know, for instance, in the past, this is this 50 year governor. But we have never seen the governor. Personally, I've never seen the governor. Seeing him in, in terms of uh, uh, interacting, in, with, interacting him. with him, yeah. I have not even seen him physically. Okay. There has never been any event where we are invited. You can't go to a government house yourself, you have to be invited. When we make application to see the governor, we are told we can see the governor. We have no, we have, nobody allows us to see him. And that is not, it's not right. It doesn't help the state. So those who are managing the media of the government, are doing, they are shooting the government on the leg. They are doing the wrong thing. And they're thinking that that is why this governor, who is supposedly working a lot of things, people don't understand what he's doing. People think he's not working. Because it is the media that will foray or put these things in the front burner and say this is what the governor is doing. So it's not happening. We don't know if the thing, all we hear is rumor. And everybody is you know, parading about with rumor. And rumor is being pandered everywhere. And in journalism, we don't you know, thrive on rumor. We thrive on facts. Unfortunately, Himo State is losing a lot because of the crisis in the New Year. So my interest is I have to use this opportunity to advise those who are in government who are managing the media for the governor 
to ensure, especially in the second term, that the the uh, the journalists are brought back into the action of government. It is a conscious effort by some people, media managers of the, of, the, of the government, not to bring, they are creating the so-called uh, division. Journalists are not against themselves. There is nothing happening against us one-on-one. -on -one. We are united professionally. But based on what he is saying, uh, some, somebody somewhere is interested in, the, you know, trying to, the, you know, uh, uh, bring, advantage take advantage of, of the so-called digital, because it doesn't affect government. NUJ cannot, is not a newspaper. NUJ can do nothing for government when it comes to media, you know, uh, awareness or publication. The, the government interest in NUJ is, is useless because the only thing you can do is bring a popular candidate who is liked by, by, the, by the journalists and then he rolls. So when government wants to invite you, you don't invite NUJ, you invite media media you know uh, members correspondents and uh, reporters who are m members of NUJ. so i don't know why somebody is uh, interested in creating confusion among the journalists which is affecting the state the state is not moving forward there are a lot of things we are supposed to bring to the uh, notice of the governor the governor won't know everything he's a human being he needs the media to strive you know to move ahead in the second channel governor needs, needs the media Anybody telling you that this governor did well in the last four years, he says the president is talking, is talking lies. The governor has been copiously underreported. I want to be quoted. The governor of Imo State, distinguished senator, Hope Uzodima, has been copiously underreported in the last four years. And the thing is, is, replay, is, is playing all, out again. All, all arising from, all arise from, from the, the dissipation in the, the NUJ. So people coming into NUJ politics does not hurt the government because it's unnecessary. What is important is that whoever is managing the media of the governor must rethink so that the state will move forward. As it is now, there's a door drop. Okay, Martin, let me ask you quickly. Has there been any efforts by the factions uh, to interact with the governor to be able to lay these issues, this complaint. The person who served as the, the commissioner of uh, information, who is also now being returned, uh, honorable uh, decline Mbadiwe Nemelumba, he has shut his door in completely against our own I want to use the word uh, in fashion. Let us not pretend about it. There is a, a, a fashion here. Uh, he is not working with us. He does not work. And you know, government uh, operates through channels. You cannot jump. You cannot jump a channel and uh, the, the door is open uh, for you. No. So that is just to answer the question. We have uh, made efforts, but uh, there are no responses towards that effect. And it is important to point out that this very faction so to speak, that is being neglected by the government is the faction that has the, the cream la cream of journalists in Imo State. Because you have Punch here, you have uh, Son here, you have uh, um, uh, Vanguard. Vanguard, all the topical all the, all the, newspapers all the, all the, all the, are the, on this the, side. The stringers are the other side. On the other side. Those the who, 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 most people who have no papers mm -hmm. are the other side. And that is what, you know, politicians like to catch into that and use them to destroy a union. But unfortunately for us, um, or rather, fortunately for us, we are united professionally. We are doing our job. We are doing the right thing. But I think it is the government that is suffering. If you ask me, the government is suffering. Most of the newspapers, if you do do, do a content analysis of the of the newspapers that are published uh, or based in Nemo State, you find out that nobody is carrying what the governor is doing. And that is not that is why it seems the governor is not even you know it's like he's not doing anything. Look at what Abia governor is doing. We have correspondence in Abia State in every state. Um, Patakot. You can see people. Our papers carry them because they we, they, 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 they they call they call uh, what we call a uh, press briefings there, and our reporters bring this news and we publish them. Here yeah, nobody calls you. They think they are, they are not. The people they are dealing with are stringers. They are not topically non-performing journalists. These other journalists here are the cream like cream who work by the constitution of the new age. And that is what, why I am saying, nobody, for instance, I'm a publisher. I am not, I cannot come out to destroy a state where I'm publishing because my paper sells here. So what we are saying, we're advising the governor to, you know, make sure he assembles a greater, a good, better hands as media, you know, men to manage his, uh, for instance, you have somebody, oh, we can, uh, he doesn't step out of his office. I don't know him, apart from I have just seen him once in one hotel. And I told him, I gave him advice when I had that opportunity. I said, step out of your office. Go and move around and see your colleagues. This is the first time a chief press secretary of the governor 
He doesn't know of where office. He doesn't know my office. He doesn't know one office. He doesn't know many offices. He stays in the cubicle of government house and thinks he can run the, the, the media. Nobody can rule, the, uh, can govern a state alone. If you're a governor, that is why you have peripheral of office. You have commissioner for this, commissioner for this. There are ideas we can bring, and then these things will make this thing work. And uh, you know, you know the funny aspect of it. You know, uh, when the governor goes to Lagos or uh, Abuja, we see the same information commissioner, the same CPS and the same SA, who have refused to talk to journalists here, organizing press briefings. Uh, you know, for the governor in either Abuja or uh, Lagos. Which is unprofessional. Which means uh, Imo, Imo media is neglected. That Completely. is it. Okay. That it doesn't help the government. Neither does it help governors. Yeah, but, but let, let me ask Martin, uh, the Emelumba, uh, the Commissioner for Information, who is returned, is a media man. And um, media men in Imo State have been alleging that he is the one that is behind the crisis in the state. And uh, because he was the one that uh, took Led Wanguma to the governor, even when the matter is still in court, in, in, yes, in the court, correct. So it was reported. And um, I, I, I want to ask has there been any opportunity, any efforts to interface with him to draw his attention to some of these uh, issues? Yes, let me come in there personally. The Commissioner of Information is my friend, I uh, and otherwise my organ. I worked with him very many years when he was with the one. Okay. Joe, I have worked with him. When this government was coming in the embryonic, uh, embryonic stage of this government, when they were even campaigning, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, campaign this thing held at this uh, very uh, uh, place here, I was the person who coordinated for him. So he knows what, he, what he's supposed to do as a professional. He's a street journalist. So he's a journalist, he's supposed to do, know what we are talking about, and make it work. The greatest aspect of undoing it, which is very, very unfortunate, is that some of our colleagues who are ex uh, chairman, for instance, somebody like Fidel Onyeneke, he's a part of this government for the past six months. He was elected as a, and he has abandoned journalists. He knows that there, is, there are cracks in the system. All he's looking for is what will benefit him, how he will be appointed commission, appointed something else. He has refused. To bring this to join hands and to make sure that the media in Imo is united for the governor, you know, for the governor's sake. The governor needs the media. The cream la cream of Imo and UJ are with us. Anybody trying to shut us out is trying to destroy Imo State. The governors in Imo State need topical journalists, practical journal, experienced journalists. If anybody is doing anything and you are not calling Lambert Ojuku, you are not calling Henry Ekbe. You are not calling Uri Martins. You are not calling Afamichi. Do you understand? You are calling these topical people who everybody knows. It means you don't know what you are doing. No government has ever run the state without people like this. These are topical personalities. If you are doing things, you are not carrying people like Steve Ozeshi. You are not carrying other people like that. You are not carrying them. Then it means you don't know what you are doing. There are a lot of people you carry. Uh, the son man, what's his name? George. Uh, George. Val. 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 You don't, I mean, what are you doing? Because these people, are, they own na the nation newspapers, they and all of them. You don't carry them along. And all of them. If you, don't, if you are against government, or so to speak, according to them, Everybody is against government. How can you be against government in the state? Are we politicians? We are not politicians. They are blackmailing journalists in Imo, giving us bad name in order to hang us. The governor needs to sit down with the media and ask who is right on him, so that we can advise him. Second term, we challenge the governor of Imo state to leave a legacy. A two-term senator, the state which he rules must run true and well. There must be a legacy. If you think he has played a role, like somebody... In the whole south for instance, in the whole south where he comes from, they have the, all the most of, about three, four, five uh, councils are in problem. Uh, the the Potakot River State uh, Council is in division. Imo State Council is in division. Even Abia, where he has no secretariat, Abia is not moving well. They are not with him. Then if you go to Ebony, Ebony uh, Council is in crisis. So I do not understand what is this. So he is not doing what he's supposed to do as a national president. The moment you won the, let us assume you won the first um, election through crisis. When you came back, you are supposed to have you come back to do things well so that you leave a legacy. This, with due respect, may be the worst NUJ president in the history of, uh, of, of Nigeria. And it's very unfortunate that he's coming from a man who comes from the Southeast. It is not a very good uh, history for us. So, and specifically, it uh, uh, as per Imo Council, 
um, you, you fingered him as... Um, he is the genesis possible. of the problem. Yeah, the because if he has come in as a leader, say, gentlemen, what, look at what you want to do. Because, for instance, the botched election, he was there when he was the national vice president. It was him who stopped the election. What uh, Ojuku is saying is that he took sides. He took, he took, and he, he should be reconciled. Okay. He should have, as a father, he should have called the two factions for reconciliation. You know, his three, three year term, his six year term is in crisis. Mm -hmm. And he ought to have done all this. Mm -hmm. It is this election problem that is happening in Ebony, in Rivers. That these are problems. He ought to have, that is the quality of leadership. And he has failed to do that. Okay. And it's unfortunate. How, how, how more? He, in by October, there about he should step aside, and then not no, not step aside. He should go. He, he will go. He stay. He stay. No, what I mean, he stay. No, should will elapse. So the northern part, we, in a new UJ election, the national level, we have the north and the south. Okay, gentlemen, uh, this is where we draw the curtain. And um, Martin, I will want you to just put a word across to the media men in the states, to the government. And, uh, Honestly, we appreciate uh, the efforts of uh, any journalist or publisher in the states because we have been doing very very well very wonderfully the publishers i don't know how they're managing with the harsh economy every day you see them from monday to saturday uh, we have the highest number of uh, local newspapers in the, based. in the country mm -hmm. you know that are state based so it is very wonderful and everywhere you go there's no there's no 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 place you go in Imo State you don't see at least groups of uh, journalists reporting events. We are doing you uh, know very well. They should not allow the crisis lingering to disturb them, to dissuade them from doing their their job. It's okay. Come here, one more word. Okay, one more word is that the governor. I plead with His Excellency, distinguished senator, to oppose them, to come in like uh, my colleague Uri has said. Journalists, uh, publishers in the state is, is that you need to interact with journal, uh, journalists and publishers in the states, because they, we are public, we are we are uh, SMEs, we we are we are employing people. What we need the governor to do is to come and let us tell him how how others were doing before he come. We were we, there are supports we are supposed to. For instance, all our correspondents in government in them, you can't believe it. There is no correspondent in government house. They were asked out from the day one. It has been, it is never done. Right now. Right now, there are no correspondents in the in, in, in government house except uh, TVC and you know all this and that. But no local press, no local state-based medium mm -hmm. has a single representative in the entire government house. It's never done. It doesn't help the governor. So we we need we need to tango with the government so that things will go well. He need to give attention to publishers. Like he said, publishers are suffering. We are employing people. The government must also know that this is a way of creating jobs. We are not his enemies, we are his friends. Anybody telling him we are against him is wrong. He's doing the wrong, wrong thing. The media must assist the governor to do well. And we are willing to do that. Yeah. Mr. Ray, thank you for coming to our project. Thank you very much, Afam. Yeah. Comrade Ojuku, thank you for being part of our It's my pleasure, sir. Yeah, this is where we round off uh, the program. And then um, we have had a gentleman talk about uh, that criminality is the factor underlying the crisis in Imo State. And he um, said the Imo State government is being underreported because government has refused to pay attention to the media men. Um, one of the discussions mentioned that governors should leave a legacy. And um, Imo State is reported as the state with the highest number of state-based tabloids and should be encouraged. On this note, uh, we ask the authorities to step in to resolve the crisis in Imo Council of Enuji because the stakeholders and so many other persons are being affected by what is happening. Thank you for being part of our program. My name again is Afan Ejim.